Now I want to talk to, before I close, a, to a special group here. And I want to talk to those of you who had faith in the past, but maybe you feel you've lost it. Okay? And we all know people like this. We all have friends, neighbors, loved ones, family members, relatives who had faith in Jesus Christ in the past or had faith in God in the past, but they walked away and they said, I don't have any faith anymore. I don't believe anymore. What causes people to lose their faith? Well, in a word, when circumstances don't turn out the way I want them to, a lot of people say, then forget you, God. Because we want God who's a genie, who does everything our way, who answers everything our way. We want God to serve us instead of us serving God. Pain can cause people to lose their faith. I, as a pastor, I'm certain, have talked to more people in pain than any of you ever have. I know people who've lost their faith because of abuse. I know people who've lost their faith because of betrayal and adultery and infidelity and divorce. I know people who've lost their faith because they started a business and it went bankrupt and it broke their heart. I know people who've lost their faith because they prayed that a loved one wouldn't die and the person died. Friends, everybody dies. At some point, everybody dies. We weren't made to last forever on this planet. I'm glad we don't live forever on a broken planet full of sin, suffering, sadness, and sickness. You were made to last forever, just not on a broken planet. You were made to last forever in a perfect place. I'm glad we don't live here forever. I'm glad we die and we get to go to the place where we will live in perfection forever and ever and ever. I, I know people who've lost their faith because they prayed for something to happen or not to happen, prayed and prayed and prayed year after year after year, and then it just never was answered. And they said, well, forget you, God, and they walk away. And yet, at the same time, we all know people, other people, who've gone through unspeakable suffering, far worse than any of us in this room have ever, ever experienced. Unspeakable suffering and pain. And yet, they, their faith grew stronger. They got closer to God. Their lives became more beautiful, not more broken and more bitter. What makes a difference? Why is it you can take two people, put them in the exact same circumstances, the same pain, the same unexplained tragedy, and one person will run away from God and the other person will run to God? What causes that? I mean, if, if you're in a tragedy, I highly recommend you not run from God because there's no answers out there in the world. You're not gonna get any comfort out there. When you are in pain, always run to God. Even when you don't understand it, run to God because he's the one who can comfort you. Now we always want God to explain everything. God doesn't owe me an explanation or you an explanation for everything that happens. And on top of that, explanations don't comfort. The comfort of God is what comforts. If my wife died tonight and I knew the reason why she died, it wouldn't make it any less painful. Explanations never comfort. But when we go through a tragedy, we go, why, why, why? You're not going to know. There's some things we're just not going to know on this side of eternity. When we get to heaven, God will explain it. We'll look back and go, oh, now I see why. God specializes in bringing good out of bad. Not everything that happens in the world is good. There's a lot of bad in the world. And not everything that happens in the world is God's will. People say, well, it must have been God's will that that person got murdered. No, it wasn't God's will. God has a will, Satan has a will, and you have a will. And, and don't blame God for your bad decisions or somebody else's bad decisions. If I went out this afternoon, got drunk, got in a car accident, and killed three people, that would not be God's will, that would be my will. Don't blame God for the, God could easily get rid of all the evil in the world. How? Get rid of you. <laughs> and me and everybody else that he's given the freedom. God does not force you to do good. You're made in his image, so you have the freedom to choose, and we typically choose the wrong thing, and people get hurt. But God specializes in bringing good out of bad. Any God he can bring good out of good, but he turns crucifixions into resurrections. And one day I'll understand all of that. But I suffer for what's right, and I trust what he says, but I know that God 
wants me to turn to him in my pain. Why is it then that so many don't? When some people go through a suffering, they, they shrivel up and they get hard and they get cold and they get angry and they get bitter and the rest of their life they're bitter and angry and they make everybody else around them bitter and angry. That's a, that's a loser. That's the wrong way to respond. On the other hand, there's some people when they face unexplained tragedies, they survive, they thrive, and they even grow. And their faith deepens, and their muscles get stronger, and they become more beautiful, and more whole, and more balanced, and more loving. What makes the difference? Some of you are thinking, Rick, you just don't understand why, why I, I've, I've left the faith. You don't know what it's like to have your heart shattered and broken in a million pieces. You don't know what it's like to have a major loss in your life. You don't know what it's like to have your dream splattered on the ground. You don't know what it's like to have a prayer that you prayed for over and over and over and it wasn't answered. And I would say to you, yes I do. Yes I do. Personally, today, this Easter, April 5th, is the most poignant and the most painful Easter I've ever had in my entire life. Because two years ago, on this date, April 5th, most of you know, my youngest son lost his 27-year battle, life battle, with mental illness, and he died. It was the worst day of my life. The day that I had prayed would never happen, happened. The thing that I feared might, from, since he had struggled with mental illness as a little child, actually came to pass. And it rocked my world and my family's world. And the grief is deep and intense and I'm still not over it. And I had a good cry this morning on the second anniversary of his death. Last Easter came eight late. And so, when Matthew died on Easter week two years ago, last Easter, there was a separation and we were able to honor and think about our son on the day of his death and then celebrate Easter a few weeks later. When I realized that this year, Easter was gonna be on the same date as the death of my son, I was disappointed to say the least. And I was going, this is not what I need, God. This is not what I want. What I'd like to do is I'd like to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus quietly, low-key, at home, with my wife, with my Lord, and with my kids, and just get through the day. What I didn't need was the biggest Christian day of the year, preach 14 times and stand on the patio for 100 selfies. <laughs> I, I didn't need that. I didn't need that not with the grief that I am carrying. And yet the more that I thought about it, the more I realized this is perfect. Because the resurrection is my reason for hope. If there was no resurrection, I would be in absolute despair. It would mean there is no possibility of my seeing my son again. There's no possibility of afterlife. There's no possibility of heaven. There would be nothing. I would be in absolute despair if Jesus Christ hadn't risen from the dead. It is the truth that keeps me going. It is the foundation of my confidence. It is the thing that gives me comfort. It is the thing that stabilizes my ship in the deepest storms. If it weren't for the resurrection, there would be no hope. Over the last two years, I've been interviewed many, many times by national and international media, and they always say, Rick, you prayed for 27 years that your son's mental illness would be healed, and that prayer was not answered, and you prayed that he wouldn't die, and he did. Why have you not left your faith? Why have you not walked away? And that's actually a pretty easy question for me to answer. It's because of what I know. I have walked with God for almost 50 years. I'm a friend of God. I know him better than I know you. And there are some things I know about God that hold me in the darkest days of doubt, despair, and depression. For one thing, I know, I know that God is a good God. And the reason I know that God is a good God 
is because everything in my life is a gift of God's goodness. The air I'm breathing right now is a gift of God's goodness. The fact that my heart is pumping blood is a gift of God's goodness. The fact that you can see and hear and speak right now is a gift of God's goodness. Everything in your life is a gift of God's goodness. If it weren't for God being a good God, you wouldn't be sitting there, you wouldn't be alive. Everything you have is a gift of God's goodness. Now, if If God was not a good God, all that would be in the universe would be evil. Now we know there is evil in the world. We know there's a lot of bad, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of heartache. But we also know that in this world, there's a lot of good. There's a lot of beauty. There's a lot of of beautiful things and sun and shine and colors and relationships and love. And that's because God is a good God. And then I know that God loves me more than I will ever, ever be able to comprehend. At least not until I get to heaven, I get bigger brain capacity. No man will ever love you like Jesus Christ. No woman will ever love you as much as Jesus Christ does. You can't even understand how much that love is. And because I know God is a good God, and I know God is a loving God, I know that God's plan and purpose for my life is both good and loving. His plan is to help me, not to hurt me. And there are many things in life that I don't understand right now. And when I get to heaven, it's all going to get clear. And I go, oh, well, of course. Now I see why. That was not good, but you brought good out of it. And that was not good, but you brought good out of it. And that was terrible, and that was evil, but you brought good out of it. And I could see how God's plan for my life is bigger than my problems. And God's purpose for my life is greater than the problem that you are going through right now. I know that God understands my pain. I know that God understands my broken heart because he's had one. The Bible tells us that God grieves when he sees all the sin on earth. And when Jesus Christ died on the cross with his arms outstretched, nails through his hands, bleeding from his side, the spear, the nails, the crown of thorns in his head, where they had beat him to a pulp, where they had tortured him, where they would ripped his beard out just to be mean, where they would spit on him, harassed him, stripped him naked, all the pain that Jesus went through, I know that my Savior understands my pain, my emotional and my physical pain. And I know that God knows what it's like to lose a son. People say, where was God when your son died, Rick? He was the same place he was when his son died, on the cross, weeping in heaven, worrying because sin required that that penalty. Sin required that suffering. And Jesus paid for your suffering so you wouldn't have to. And I know that this is not the end of the story, that this is not all there is. And that when I go through tough times, I may suffer for being a Christian, but so what? The rewards will be forever in eternity. And most of all, I know that Satan lost because Satan can't get at my son anymore. He can't torture him with thoughts of compulsion or thoughts of depression or thoughts of suicide or thoughts of anything. He can't torture him anymore. My son is safe in the arms of Jesus Christ and he can't get at him anymore. He can't hurt him anymore. He lost big time. He thought he'd won, but he lost big time. Now, I don't know what kind of day you're going through. You may be going through days of darkness and depression and doubt and despair. I dare you to believe. You may be going through days of worrying and wearying. I dare you to believe. You may be going through days of confusion. You go, I don't have the slightest idea what I should be doing with my life or where I should be going or what's up and what's down. I dare you to believe. You may be going through days of grief and your heart is ripped wide open. I dare you to believe. Run to God, not away from him, and you will find the comfort that you can't get anywhere else. On the screen, the Bible says this, John chapter one, verse 12, to all who received him, that's Jesus Christ, to those who believed in his name, 
Jesus gave the right to become children of God. How do I become a child of God? How do I get in God's family? How do I know for certain that I'm going to heaven when I die? How do I make sure I'm on the in crowd, not the out crowd? I wanna be a child of God. Well, it says there, put that verse back up on the screen. It says two things, two verbs, received and believed. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, Jesus gave the right to become God's children. I believe he is God and I receive him as my Lord. I believe he is God and I receive him as my Lord. Most, if not all of us, have done the second part. You have believed in Jesus Christ. You believe he historically existed. You accept the fact that he died on the cross. He rose again. Congratulations, you're halfway there. You now need to receive him as the Lord of your life. If you're ready to have your life changed, this one's gonna do it. It's gonna seal your eternal destiny. It's gonna change your life from here on out because you're not gonna live for yourself anymore. Would you pray this simple prayer in your heart? You don't have to say it aloud. God knows your thoughts. He knows what you're thinking. And it doesn't even matter the words, but as I pray these words, you can just say, me too, me too, Jesus. Just say, dear Jesus, you have promised that if I believe in you, everything I've ever done wrong will be forgiven. And Jesus, you have promised that if I believe in you, I will learn the purpose of my life. And you have promised that if I believe in you, I will get strength and power for daily living. And that you will accept me into your eternal home in heaven one day. I want to have a real faith in you. Not a fake faith. Not a phony faith. I want to be a true believer. Not a partial believer. I want to believe and I want to receive you. So today, I confess just pray this in your heart. I confess, I believe that you are God and I receive you into my life as my Lord. Today, I'm turning over every part of my life to your management. You are God and I'm not. And you have the right to call the shots in my life. Jesus, I wanna relax in your love. Thank you that I don't have to earn it or deserve it or work for it. I want to use the rest of my life serving you rather than serving myself. And Lord, when it is required, I'm ready to suffer for doing what's right, whatever that means. Finally, I want to trust what you've said, both your instructions and your promises. I humbly commit my life to you and I humbly ask you to accept me into your family and save me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.